Good morning children. Good morning boys and girls. My name is Teacher Hema from Sitam Kitengela. I'm so excited to see you. Let me see some of you waving up at me. Oh yes, yes. How was your week? How have you been doing? Have, been, have you been learning something new? Have you been studying? Because I know and I understand you guys you are not going to school. Are you also remembering to read the Bible? Okay, before we start, kindly call your brother wherever he, she is or your sister. Let's gather together, even your parents. Let's all sit down and pray as we start our Sunday school lesson today. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts. We thank you for taking good care of us. Thank you for watching over our families and relatives wherever they are. As we sit before your presence, we pray that, Lord, we may delight in your word, that you may give us courage and understanding even at this particular time when each and every one of us are at home. We pray and believe in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, children. From last week, Teacher June was able to take us through a lesson of that we should not fear. How many of you can remember that story? Uh -huh. Who was the main character in the story? Yes, yes, we had Jesus and his disciples. I remember even the, 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 the disciples were all afraid. Can you remember that? The wind was shaking their boat and they got so terrified. But they remember that Jesus was with them. And what did they do? They went and called Jesus. And Jesus was able to calm the storm. How many of you can remember the memory verse? Mm -hmm. Anyone? You can shout it or share it with your parent. What did you learn? Huh? I have it here. It was from the book of Isaiah 41. For those who are not there, so that they can also remember this memory verse. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. That was from the book of Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. Now I'm going to show you a demonstration of something that we need all to look at. Look at this, what I'm going to do. And this one will teach us to have courage in the, in the Lord Jesus Christ. The water is like a situation around us, or the times around us. Then here I have beautiful pictures of children. And down there we have stones. These stones represent difficult times. So I'm going to put them in the water. Then let us observe what is happening. Okay? Okay. You see? What is happening there? Everything has gone down. So children, when we are worried, when we are not sure of what is happening or what is going to happen, we get way down and we become very sad. What do you think we should do when you feel so down and very sad? Look what I'm doing. When I pray to God, that stones leaves me. So the worry leaves me. When I take the Bible and read, what happens? I get courage. I get strength. So do you see what is happening to the pictures? Do you see the picture of the children? When you sing and glorify God, what happens? He comes up. Our strength is lifted and our courage in the Lord is lifted up. I know children, you are going to learn so many things from this. But the most of it is says, if we have been discouraged, we are weighed down. If we have worries, we are weighed down. But our dependence and our courage comes from God. And we all get our courage when we read the Bible. In our lesson today, are you ready? The topic is about being strong and courageous. And this is from the book of 1 Samuel 
chapter 17. Are we there yet? First Samuel chapter 17. You can tell your parents or your siblings to help you get the, to the Bible book. To be strong and courageous is to stand firm in faith when faced with difficult situation. Courage is not showing off how tough you are, but it is the willingness to trust and believe in God. There is a video clip, children, I want you to watch. And it's going to teach us and show us how we can practice courage and be strong at the same time. God's story, David and Goliath. So part of God's story is about the time David fought Goliath. And it begins like this. David was the youngest of eight brothers. His job was being a shepherd, which meant he spent all day in a field watching sheep eat and roll around the grass. Meanwhile, some of his brothers were off with the Israeli army preparing for war against the Philistines. The Philistines were one of the toughest armies the people of Israel had to fight. So one day, David was taking food to his brothers because his dad asked him to. But when he got there, his brothers accused him of coming so he could watch the fight instead of the sheep. Since David knew in his heart he was just obeying his dad, he didn't mind being misunderstood. Anyway, while David was there, he saw a huge Philistine man, more than nine feet tall, step onto the field between the two armies. He was wearing a thick helmet and armor and carrying huge weapons. His name was Goliath, and he was definitely used to being the winner. David found out that Goliath had been stepping onto the field like this every morning for the past 40 days and saying, Give me a man and let us fight each other. But nobody from Israel was brave enough to fight him, even the king. Well, David didn't like that this giant was intimidating the Israelites. After all, they were God's special family. And because God was with the Israelites, they could have courage in any situation. So David, who wasn't even a soldier, told the king, I'll fight against him. Now, the king thought David was too small, but he really wanted someone to fight Goliath. So he gave in. And David knew he wasn't strong enough to beat Goliath by himself, but he believed God would be with him. So he said, the Lord will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. The king hoped David was right. He even had his own weapons and armor put on David, but they didn't fit him. David decided to go into battle in his regular clothes. That's how sure he was that God would help him. Anyway, David went to a nearby stream and chose five smooth stones to use with his slingshot. Then he walked onto the battlefield to meet the massive Goliath. When Goliath saw how wimpy David looked, he was furious. He thought he'd get to fight the Israelite's strongest warrior. He said to David, Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals. David might have looked like a wimp, but he was actually really brave. In fact, he was so brave that when he was taking care of sheep, he fought off bears and lions. Because God helped him protect his sheep, David knew God would help him protect this special family. David said, you come at me with a sword, but I come at you with the name of the Lord Almighty. He was explaining to Goliath that God was more powerful than anything. He also added that he would feed Goliath's flesh to the birds, which made the giant even more mad. Then David took a stone, put it in the slingshot, and slung it at Goliath. Goliath didn't even get a chance to swing a sword because the stone hit him right in the forehead and sunk in deep. He face planted straight into the ground. Nobody could believe it. Then David ran over, took hold of the giant's sword and drew it from the sheath. He took the sword and cut off Goliath's head. David carried the head all the way back to Jerusalem. And when the Philistine army realized Goliath was dead, they started running away like a bunch of scaredy cats. The Israelites chased the Philistines, shouting loudly. They had won. God used David, who was just an average kid, to rescue his people. And that's the story of David and Goliath. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. David was a shepherd. He brought his brother's lunch. He saw Goliath. Goliath scared everybody. David wasn't scared. He knew God was stronger. 
David fought Goliath, he used one stone. God helped him kill Goliath. The Israelites won. God's people were saved. And that's a part of God's story. Children, what did you see in the video? Do you recognize anybody? Yes, yes, I have a picture here. Can you see David in this picture? Mm-hmm. What is he doing? Yes, taking care of his father's sheep. And remember, David was also anointed by the priest Samuel to become a king. From this story, what else do you see? Ah, a big and tall giant, isn't it? We are seeing that there was an army which used to mock and to make fun of God's army. And this army, this giant belonged to the Philistines army. He used to scare them, terrified. And the God's army used to get scared. One day, Jesse, who is David's father, sent David to take some food, some lunch, to his brother. Have you been taking care of your siblings by giving them or serving them food? So this particular day, that's what Jesse asked his son David to do. So David got his lunch pack and went. And he marched. And in, in his shoulder, he had his bag. Inside his bag, he had a sling. I don't know if you most, most of you know what a sling is, but you can look at this picture and see. When David arrived at the army, where his brother, three of his brother, were in that army, he greeted them. And as he was greeting them, he heard a very big voice shouting and mocking at the Israelite. David asked, who is this? Then one of his brother tried to shut him out. But David said, no, why is he shouting at you? Why is he mocking? the army of the Lord. Then he was explained that Goliath has been fighting God's army and every day he would come at the field shouting, making fun of them and terrifying them. For 40 days he would do this thing. And the children of the, of the Israelites, that is the army of God, were so way down. They didn't have any courage to face Goliath. David said that he can take up this giant. The army of the Lord took David to their king, who was King Saul. And when he reached there, David talked to King Saul and explained to him confidently with courage that I can take up this giant. But King Saul was so worried. Why do you think King Saul was worried? Because he saw that David was very little, very little boy. But David had a lot, a lot of courage. And children, let me ask you, where do you think this courage, where do you think David got his courage? He did not get his courage because of the strength he has in himself, but he knew his strength comes from God, who he had believed. And he explained to King Saul that while he was taking care of his father's sheep, as you had seen in the video, he was able to kill the bear and the lion. Is there anybody here who have killed a lion or a bear? No. Even me, I haven't. But David had that strength and courage because he trusted God completely. 
in this situation. And God gave him the strength that he needed. King Saul looked at David and gave David his armor. But these armors were not for David. They could not even fit him. David tried to march to see if he can walk with them. Let us walk together. Are you in a space where you can walk? Yes. Let us walk. So they walked, they walked. But David finally said, Ah, uh ah, -uh, I cannot. The armor was too heavy. And that he knew he could not go and face Goliath with this. He said, I have something. And I know how I could fight Goliath. With great courage, David marched. Let us march children together. Let us march to the battlefield. Yes, left, right, left, right. Anybody there who's marching? Yes, left, right. And when he reached to the, to the army, to the field where all the armies were assembled, he approached Goliath. Goliath was still shouting, give me the man who can fight me, trying to intimidate and terrifying the children of Israel. And he took out his sword. As he was approaching the field, he realized he was not a soldier, it was a little boy. And he laughed. But David, with courage, he quote this scripture. Can you see it on the screen? Can you all read it together aloud? In 1 Samuel 17, 45, what did David say? You come against me as, with a sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of, army, the, God of the army of Israel, whom you have defiled. This day I will give carcass of the Philistine army to the birds and to the wild animal. So David ran very fast. And you know when he said that, what it meant? This means David was sure that God was going to give him the strength and the courage that he needed to fight this Goliath. He put his stone into the sling and he struck Goliath on the forehead with great courage. The stone sank into Goliath's forehead here. Do you see children here? In between the eyes. And he fell face down. The mighty giant who used to mock and terrify God's army had finally fallen on the ground. When the Philistines saw that their hero was dead, they turned and ran away. The entire army of the Lord was joyful. In fact, the entire army got courage. They became strong. They shouted and gave praises to the Lord. Now, children, we are asked to take our stand and faith in God, like David. We need to have courage. If we ask God, he will give us the courage to face anything that may seem too difficult for us. Are there things that seem too difficult to you right now? Yes, even me. There are so many things especially at this particular time where we have so many rules that we have to follow that I should not hug people, I should not greet them with my hands, I should not come very close to them. They are very difficult for us to do. And there are things that we even wonder, if I go out, will I, be, will I get this disease? But God is telling us today that we need to be strong and courageous like David. How are we going to be strong at our difficult time? You remember that experiment we saw? The one I was showing you in the water? Yes. By praying. If we pray, if we read our Bibles and release everything to God, God will give us the strength and courage to face every day and to do everything that is expected of us. Like washing our hands every time we go out, every time you visit the toilet, every time you touch something that you are not sure of. God will give us that strength we need. And this is for those children who know Jesus Christ. If 
you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Kindly pray with me this prayer. Dear God, I come to you today. I am a sinner. Forgive me of all my sins. I welcome you into my heart so that you'll be my friend who will give me strength and courage to face each and every day in all times and seasons in life. In Jesus' name we pray. So children, David trusted in God and was successful. Showing the true power is not from size or strength, but from God. God gave him courage and he was able to face Goliath boldly without fear. He also knew that God who was with him is bigger than Goliath. Do you know that the God who is with us, even those children who have just prayed with me right now and received Jesus as their personal savior and friend, right now God is with you and he's bigger and he's going to give you strength and courage to do the things which you think you cannot do. Let us look at the memory verse on our screen. It's from which book? Uh -huh. Is this book new to us? No, can we mention it? I will help mentioning it. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. What does it say? Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So my children, this is what God is telling us. Even when we cannot go to school, even when we cannot go out to play, even when we cannot hug our relatives and friends, God says we be strong and courageous in doing all that we are needed to do and that he'll be with us. He'll give us the strength to do it. Because you are still at home, and we, have, we cannot come to church, I have also prepared a takeaway home for you. But this time, you will tell your guardians or parents to download it for you in the link on the screen. Can you see the link on the screen? Can your parents see the link? They can download it for you, then they print it out for you so that you can be calorie to be able to memorize the memory verse and also the picture of David as he show courage and strength in the Lord. Let us pray as we thank God for this lesson. Dear God, we thank you and we bless you. Thank you for today's lesson that you have shown us true courage does not come from the size of weapons or the size of the body, but true courage comes from you. When we call upon you, when we trust you, You'll give us the strength and the courage that we need. I pray for all the children who are watching and listening today, wherever they are, oh God. These rules that have been put for them, may you give them the courage and the strength to be able to do them so that each and every one of them will be safe wherever they are. Watch over them through this week and help them to meditate even on our memory verse. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, children. We can listen to this song as we join you next week on Sunday. Bye. Bye. Joshua 1 9. Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be afraid. God is always with you.
scared. I scared you. When I know you're there. I you. When I'm weak or strong. I you. When I sing this song. I'm gonna be great.